Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, Jenny McCarthy and Donnie Wahlberg are here. From their new marriage to their new reality show, we'll find out intimate secrets about the newlywed couple. And if you want answers, she's got them. Wendy takes on your burning questions. Plus, all of today's juiciest hot topics. Now, here's Wendy. It's time for Hot Topics. Thank you. Um, I'm getting my snacks together. Not sure exactly what I'm going to snack on, but tonight is a big night on TV. You know, American Idol returns tonight at 8 o'clock yeah. on Fox. We'll be looking at the J-Lo glow, what she wearing, and see what all the contestants are about. And then at 9 o'clock after um, American Idol on Fox, it's the... Yes, you know what I'm... Yes, you ready? You ready? One of the most highly anticipated new shows ever. Uh, It's called Empire. It premieres tonight. It's a juicy drama about the world of hip-hop and the music industry. And Taraji P. Henson and Terrence Howard are the stars. Taraji is like um, a black Joan Collins. And the, the show has gotten, like, really good reviews. So that comes on tonight right after Idol. And Taraji will be here tomorrow. Yeah! Well, <laughs> well, all I'm saying is I'm not exactly sure that George Clooney is, should, should be the one that you ask for help with your love life. You know, he's just getting his own love life together right now. And it took him, what, 52? He's 52? It took him 52 years to do that. <laughs> so I'm not sure whether he's the love advisor, but he and Sandra Bullock have been friends for over 20 years, back when neither one of them had two dimes to scrape together and nobody was casting them in nothing. You know what I mean? And now they're both these gigantic stars. Well, Sandra reportedly asked George to, you know, set her up with one of George's wife's friends, Amal's friends, who's not in the um, music industry. I mean, the, um, you know, entertainment industry. Well, now, I think this is a terrible idea. And, you know, it's not just that George is not exactly the hookup king because, you know, he just got hooked up himself. And in my mind, George is still like a frat boy, even at 52. Like, I just picture him, you know, being, like, frat boyish and his friends being frat boyish and just... I don't know. And then... I understand, you know, the lore of Amal's world because, you know, maybe Sandra does not want another celebrity um, and certainly it is alluring to be with a banker or, you know, somebody from, you know, Amal's side of things. But here's the thing about George and Sandra. In my mind, and I've read this before, so it was implanted there by several publications, they've always said that Sandra secretly probably feels that George is the one who got away. I mean, if you look at them together, don't they look like a couple? And... And... They spent all that time in space together. (laughs) So you you would think... (laughs) You you know... um, And my thought at being 50, Sandra's 50, at 50 years old... 
You know, this is no disrespect to anybody who still likes to be set up, but all I'm saying is that setups are usually for children and young adults. Do you know what I mean? Like grown, fully formed women. Like we don't need to be set up. Don't we have the guts to just walk into any place, even if it's by ourselves? And if we like a guy, hey, yeah. I like you. I mean, I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine at 50, you know, asking somebody to set me up. It almost seems like, not pathetic, but just, just young, you know, just, just young. Like, that's what 35-year-olds ask for and stuff. Not when you're 50 and she's got that little Louie, and I get it. You know, she, um, she was really hurt by Jesse James. I think that went down, like, what, three, four years ago? It's been four years uh, four, since yeah. Jesse ripped her heart out. And we haven't heard her date anybody. I mean, she adopted Louie, and she's lived a relatively quiet life, except for that trip to space and a few other things. <laughs> But, you know, and that's another thing. Like, you know, I know Jessie ripped her heart out and stomped on it, but she let four years pass without dating. When you are a 50-year-old woman, every moment counts to get out there and date, you know? And, you know, I, I feel like Amal... Because Amal and Sandra have been friends, or Amal and, um, or Sandra and George have been friends for so long, and I know she's read some of the things that I've read regarding, you know, the one that got away. No, I'm not setting your friend up. Furthermore, have you and your friend ever really done it? Oh. Oh. Sandra Bullock's a good-looking woman. Oh. She's also been very bruised and needy on those cold L.A. nights. Oh. When the, when the rain is falling and the wine is flowing and she calls her friend George and they've known each other since forever and George probably drops his basketball. Because in my mind, that's what he does with his friends. You know, they play basketball and drink beer and, and stuff. Um, drops his basketball and hot tails it over to Sandy. I said Sandy. <laughs> And the fire plate, oh, excuse me, it's California. The fire pit is flickering. <laughs> I don't know. I just, you know, Sandra, go find your own man. Yeah. Don't ask, don't ask them all. <laughs> and, and here's another thing. If there was somebody good for a mall to set you up with, then you should have met that person at their fabulous wedding. You know what I mean? Like, if you're single and you're going to go to George Clooney's wedding over in Rome, don't you gussy yourself up real good? Yeah. Because while you're there to support your friend George, you're really there on a stroll to see what's out there. Right? That's all. Kate Gosling has a new friend. A boyfriend. And this one's not... married? <laughs> and this one's also not John. This one's a millionaire! Listen, listen, uh, everyone deserves happiness, regardless of how mean and nasty they can be sometimes. And Kate, you have a reputation that precedes you. But I will tell you this, I like how your boyfriend looks. Doesn't he look happy? Yeah. His cheeks are nice and chubby and cheruby. <laughs> and you can tell he's not high maintenance because he's wearing a wrinkled shirt. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a, whew, in a good way. And he looks like he takes good care of his teeth. He's 53 years old. Look, he's got hair like the Campbell Soup Boy with that swirl. You know, that little curl. He's tilting his head looking at us like he's probably happy. And guess how much he's worth? $30 million. I mean, for those of you watching, who are giving up on love. Are you serious? Nobody is worse off at this point in our life than a... Uh, how old is she? 30, a 39-year-old woman with eight kids. <laughs> a single mom with eight kids. So this is what this guy does. First of all, he's from Tennessee, which is great. So he's not a city slicker. Nothing against people in the city. I'm just saying, sometimes they can be slick. <laughs> so he's from Tennessee. And he works some type of highfalutin um, situation at a company. Anyway, he's a divorcee. His name is Jeff. And he's got three children, which means he knows the pain of being married 
and getting a divorce, like Kate. He's got three kids. It's not exactly eight, but with $30 million, what's eight more? Uh, and, you know, listen. We, uh... We talk a lot about money and relationships. Well, okay, I talk a lot about money and relationships here on the show. But what you have to understand is that I realize that money does not buy happiness, you know? And sometimes I just josh and joke with you guys. But in this particular case, let me tell you something. Kate needs a multimillionaire to support eight kids and keep her, um, whatever she's doing to herself going. And she looks great. You know, but that's not the Kate that we met on the John and Kate plus eight. This one looks like she's been pulled, new teeth, flat belly. You got to keep that stuff up. And you got to send all them kids to college. And I got to say, love doesn't pay the bills. I mean, love is important, but it doesn't pay the bills. So when you have eight kids and you're single, you have to be practical about who you date. You can't exactly date the principal of the middle school. Not that there's anything wrong with being a principal of the middle school. I'm just saying, when you have eight kids and you're single, it's not practical for Kate and all those kids. So... Good luck to Kate. I guess this will um, dispel John from continuously talking about uh, Kate and an alleged relationship with her security guard, Steve, who's still married, by the way. We checked his wife's Facebook page. She's listing status as still married. Now, see, who'd you rather? Uh, like, I would, ra I would rather Jeff, and I'm going to tell you why. Even though Steve, Steve is giving us, you know, a, a steamy look, and he's got good hair... And, and a tight face and, and good eyebrows. He doesn't look happy. He looks intense. Yeah. This guy up here looks happy. Aww. And at the point of being 39 with eight kids, you don't need any more intenseness. You need happiness and a long pile of money. Yeah. Okay, look. Please don't roll your eyes, and please don't walk away from the TV. I've got the first sneak peek of the new season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Yeah! Okay. Okay. So even though you hate them, you still love them? Yeah! Okay. <laughs> well, this one's a little different than the other ones because it's going to show Chris and Bruce dating new people. It's our hot clip of the day. Roll it. Bruce on the loose. Bruce on the loose party. Ah, yeah. Do you actually think I'm dating anybody? She was really one of my mom's good friends, and my mom cries about it. It's not right. I do feel like she's lonely. She just needs a mature, normal guy. His name is Corey. He's younger than Kim and Courtney. I swear I thought I heard moaning. While Chris is not one of my favorite people, I hate this relationship that she's got with that guy, Corey. Uh, there's something about... First of all, he's got that big, fat booty. <laughs> which, you know... <laughs> you know, a man with a big, fat booty, it's like... Um, oh, anyway, he's got a big, fat booty, and, um... And I just... <laughs> Although I have, I've got to say that this plot line of Bruce and Chris dating to me is more interesting than the girls because how many times is Courtney going to throw Scott out? How many times is Scott going to go to rehab? How many times are the cute kids? And yes, they are cute. But how many times are they going to run in the room and then run out of the room? How many times can we hear? Oh my God, from from Kim and um, so you know, the girls are no longer that interesting to me. I am interested in seeing Chris date, and I told you that already. Now, you know, they're, feature, they're featuring um, their dating lives on the new season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, but what I like even better is if somebody picks up Chris Goes It Alone and the dating show. Also, I hear that um, Bruce is being courted by a reality show. Ooh. That would be fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, my God. Yeah. You know... Um, when I first learned about it, I was very excited. I would love to see Bruce transition into his new life. I would love to see how he dates, what he eats, you know, what does he fasten his ponytail with, and stuff like that. I, I would love that. But then I was told that it's not going to be if he got a show about his dating life. Reportedly, he's in talks to do, do a show with his three sons. Aww. No, I said, oh, okay. Who's the one in the white t-shirt?
shirt, because I don't know him. <laughs> Apparently, his name is Bert. And, and Bert is uh, in his late 30s. And Bruce's son from a previous, previous relationship. And then, of course, there's this one right here. I forget his name. Perfectly lovely man, the, the one with the, this thick Brandon. mustache. Brandon? 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 Uh -huh. Brian. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, now, Brandon, no, not Brandon, I'm talking about the first one. Brody. Brody. That's Brandon. Brandon. Whatever. <laughs> that's, how, that's how interesting he is to me. I can't even remember his name. But, you know, like he and his wife with the blonde hair, perfectly lovely people, but we don't watch reality TV for perfect loveliness anymore. It seems as though, you know, like, you gotta, so I don't really, yeah, I don't care. I mean, they're not, they're, but I don't care. Um, I like Brody. That's the hot one with general tattoo. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he is hot. I would like to see Brody date, and I would like to see Bruce date. However, that's not what the reality show that they're negotiating is gonna be about. It's gonna be about them doing adventurous stuff. Oh. Dune buggying and parasailing and all that stuff that needs to be on Spike TV. Nothing where, don't put it on anything where women watch, because I don't think many of us, do you care? No. Not even? Absolutely. That, that's, exactly. Well, Bruce, you all do what you want. Uh, hey, Kardashian family. Hey, um, big booty boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'm just jealous since I don't have one. <laughs> Lots of juicy stories. You know I love my magazine. It's uh, magazines. It's time for Wendy's Got You Covered. Hit it. <laughs> The long-suffering Jennifer Aniston is on the cover of InStyle magazine. Oh, don't say all. Oh, MC, I'm not, oh, no, they're all. Oh. She doesn't want you to feel sorry for her, so we won't. One thing I do have to say about Jennifer Aniston, and it's always a debate when I say this, like in our meetings and stuff, I think Jennifer Aniston is an attainable girl next door, peaches and cream beauty. Not like beauty, like not devastating like uh, Angelina Jolie or, you know, like a world class, like, like a Jennifer Lopez, but beautiful in... You could, you could get this look yourself. And this is the kind of girl that you see at the mall over in Jersey. You know what I mean? No, I like that. So inside, she's talking about her wedding plans to her fiance, Justin Thoreau. Well, <laughs> well she says that uh, there's a possibility that they will elope. <laughs> well, I will read you the statement and then... We'll turn up your microphone so you can judge loud. <laughs> okay. There's a big decision in our house right now. Do you just do it and say screw it? Or do you try desperately to get away with a secret ceremony where you don't have any fun because you're hiding in a cave somewhere? Well, listen, after two years of being engaged, homegirl, just do it. Yeah. I mean... With everyone getting married around her, whether it's in the living room like Cameron Diaz or a big ceremony like uh, Clooney did or the secret one that um, Pitt and Jolie did, just don't, you've been engaged for two years. And, yeah, people do wonder after a while. I know I wonder after a while, and I always say this to you. Uh, you know, the engagement is supposed to be the drum roll, and the, the wedding is supposed to be the... Yeah. A drum roll is not supposed to last for two years. <laughs> So I'm very suspicious of exactly why it is that they haven't gotten married, and I don't believe that it's because they're trying to decide whether to have a big wedding or whether to elope. What do you think? Do you think they should have a big wedding? No. Why not? Because she's uh, 46? She's 46 years old? Well, listen, if a girl wants a big wedding, a girl should have a big wedding. But she already had the big wedding with Brad. So she got that out of her system. Like, you know what she needs to do? She needs to ordain for just 24 hours, like her housekeeper, right? <laughs> you know, you can get a 24-hour um, reverend's license and uh, let the housekeeper marry them, and then they have the party afterwards. I don't understand this big debate over a secret ceremony and hiding in a cave. You guys aren't 15, Aww. you know? She's 46, and he's 43. Uh, yeah, and they've been together for how many years? 
about five years? Oh, 2011. 2011. All right, Jen. Well, we wish you luck. We always do. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow is on the cover of Harper's Bazaar UK. Ooh. And inside, she opens up about her relationship with her, I guess, soon-to-be ex-husband, Chris Martin. Ooh. And here's what she says. She says... There are times when I think it would have been better if we had stayed married, which is always what your children want. But we've been able to solidify this friendship so that we're really close. Aww. I like it. You know, I mean, I go in and out of liking um, Gwyneth Paltrow. Sometimes I don't like her because I think that she's pompous and entitled and doesn't really understand the common man. But other times, you know, like, I think that she's attractive also in a really attainable beauty way. I, I do. I, she doesn't do a lot of fuss. She never wears anything more than chapstick, it looks like. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I don't know why you're laughing, Suzanne. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. <laughs> But you can do that when you're naturally beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> no, but, you know, but I like this whole conscious uncoupling thing. I think that if you have children, conscious uncoupling is really, really important. And, you know, they do stuff together to the point where... Uh, you almost wonder whether they're still having relations. You know what I mean? Yeah. I suspect every once in a while, when it's raining in L.A., <laughs> And the fire pit is going, <laughs> and the kids are asleep. But that is not the test of a good conscious uncoupling. I'll tell you what the test is, because they've just been separated for like three months, you know what I mean? The real test of how these two are going to be able to get along is when one of them really does get a serious relationship and fall in love. And oh, please, before you say he's involved with Jennifer Lawrence, no, he's not. Jennifer Lawrence doesn't want that old man. <laughs> older than him. Understand what I'm saying. Chris Martin is in his late 30s. You know what I mean? He's got two kids and a soon-to-be divorce under his belt. What young 24-year-old girl needs with that headache? You know, she needs a fresh man with no kids, no ex-wife, and a good... I mean, it's cute that they do whatever they do, but um, anyway, the test of true, mature people separating and consciously uncoupling is when one of them falls in love, and now how do they deal with it? You can't drive by anymore and sit at the fire pit. Just pick up the kids, I'll leave them in the mailbox, and go on <laughs> about your business. <laughs> and that is Wendy's Got You Covered. Thank you. Show. Newlyweds Donnie Wahlberg and Jenny McCarthy are here. But up next, it's time for Celebrity Fan Out, so don't go far. <laughs> it's a brand new year, and that means all new hot topics. Plus, from the new show Empire, Taraji P. Henson. This is definitely going to be my new show. And celebrity trainer Sean T with workout tips that he says aren't crazy. I'll be the judge of that. Tomorrow on an all new Wendy. <laughs> I have so much fun having fun with you. Thank you for being here. Okay. It's time for Celebrity Fan Out. I love this. Our first Celebrity Fan Out comes from Brenda P., who watches The Wendy Show on WTVT in Palm Harbor, Florida. Brenda writes, How you doing, Wendy? I was at LAX when I saw my favorite actor. It was Rob Lowe. <laughs> yeah, he's good. She goes, I followed him into the bookstore and asked him for a pic. My hands were shaking so hard that his wife had to step in and take the photo of us. You know, Rob is one of those people at 50 years old, he never ages. He's like a, a, still a, you know, a hot young boy. Oh, wait, no. They don't have to agree with me. I'm just saying. Um, all right. Our next celebrity fan out comes from Divine P, who watches our show here in New York on WNYW, Brooklyn, to be exact. Divine says, hey, Wendy, how you doing? I was working as a hairstylist at New York's Fashion Week when I ran into Miss Gone with the Wind fabulous Kenya Moore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She says, Wendy, she's even prettier in person. Yeah, I like Kenya. You know, she's on the new uh, season of Celebrity Apprentice, and she turns it out. Okay. 
Our next celebrity fan out comes from Rosemary B, who watches The Wendy Show on KCPQ in Seattle, Washington. Rosemary writes, hi, Wendy. How you doing? I work at the airport and notice someone at the massage... Ew. <laughs> oh, the germs of it all. At the, at the massage chair. Um, and it was Macklemore. When I stopped... Look, when I stopped to ask, for, um, ask him if it was really him, he said, yes, you want to take a selfie? Macklemore, by the way, recently he and his fiance announced that they are expecting their first child. So congratulations. <laughs> and I don't mean ew to massage chairs. I mean ew to that hole you put your face in. You know what I mean? Our next celebrity fan out comes from Stacey T, who watches uh, The Wendy Show on BET in New York City. And Stacey writes, how you doing, Wendy? A TV show was taping outside of my house, so when I walked outside, I ran into Taraji P. Henson. Wow. So now look. So she says, my seven-year-old son... Is that a seven-year-old? No, that's not a seven-year-old. There's a typo. My seven-year-old son kept yelling, baby boy, baby boy. <laughs> Taraji just laughed and was so nice when we took the picture with my daughter and I. Well, don't forget, Taraji will be here tomorrow. Thank you so much. I love Celebrity Fan Out. If you, uh, if you ever have an encounter with a celebrity and you want to share, we love this. Go to wendyshow.com. Up next, it's Jenny McCarthy and Donnie Wahlberg. Yeah. So go away. met and fell in love on television, so it's fitting that they would allow you to follow their relationship in their new reality show, Donnie Loves Jenny. Take a look. giving this woman away. Hi. Please be seated. Don't kiss me. <laughs> oh. You caught me catching feelings at a wedding. Maybe that's why I don't like them. Please give it up for my girlfriend, Jenny McCarthy, and her new husband, Donnie Wahlberger. Anybody. I don't even like big weddings, and maybe that's why I don't like you them. That, like, you. No, I started crying back there too, it, and I was I, in it, so I, mean, I get it. Jenny, like you were so loud and um, such an enjoyer of life. So to see you chill out right there, and you look beautiful in your gown, and I Thank loved you. all the roses, and you look so handsome, and the, and then your son. I know. Oh my gosh. I know. <laughs> I'm very proud. Very proud, mom. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you look fabulous. You so, look fabulous. So look, so welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm, um, I'm a fan. Thank you. I, uh, I am too. Thank you. You're welcome. I love the Wahlburgers. When you came out here, I just called you Wahlburger by accident. I, <laughs> but I was I, called that my whole life. That's I why we named too. the restaurant Wahlburgers. They used to be like, hey, Wahlburger, get a life. <laughs> now, what kind of food do you serve there? Is it all burgers? And burgers, fries, chicken onion salad, rings, shakes. Yeah. I just think it's such a booze. cute concept because, you know, we were talking about um, Ratchet Reality TV during Hot Topics, and I think most of us love ratchetness, but every once in a while... No! No, 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 no. 
<laughs> but every <laughs> once in a while, there's like a reality show that comes along that really holds your attention and there's no fighting. And I just love the dynamics. You, your brothers, your mother. Mm -hmm. Then, Je you know, you met Jenny and then Jenny popped up on it's the It's feel good TV. It is feel good yeah. TV. It's rare for people these days to like feel good TV because we like fighting and right. wig pulling. Well, that's why we hope after the success of Wahlburgers, we said, you know, there is an audience. There are people that want to watch TV and feel good. There are. And we wanted to continue that with our show. There are. So, um, and that show is going into its third season? Third season, third, yep. that's, a, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and congratulations also, Donnie, on the 100th episode of Blue Bloods. Yes. Uh, which comes on Friday nights with Donnie and his hot sidekick, Tom Selleck. <laughs> God. Who did never crush on Tom uh, Exactly. Um, look, was he at the wedding? No, no, Tom wasn't at the wedding. Yeah. Tom, Tom, I don't know, he wouldn't have cried if he did come. He wouldn't have cried like you. He might have just, I've gotten to crack little tears every now and again yeah. on the show, but Tom is a great guy. He didn't come to the wedding. It was a very small, we kept it very quiet and we wanted, you know, just a very, very select group of people there. Yeah. And, it was in my neighborhood, you yeah. know, we can only hold 100 people in the room, so in, it was very uh, in small. In Chicago? Yeah, in Chicago. Yeah. Wow, and so let me ask you guys, like, where do you live? Because you're from Boston. Yep. And you're from Chicago. Where does uh, Blue Bloods tape? Blue Bloods tapes here, mostly in Brooklyn. In, Jenny does her serious radio show in, in New York. York. But in you can York. do it from anywhere. I right? do it at Sirius, you, next uh, to Howard. I follow Howard. Yeah, yeah, say. yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, um, do you want more children? Oh. You just jump right in. Yeah, well, Let's that, go. Yeah, it's, it's only a one hour show. Yeah. I have to ask you. I was one of those people that said never say never, and it, it bit me in the ass uh, plenty of times. I said I'd never get married, and look it, I found the love of my life. Oh. I feel at this point. And you can speak for yourself, but I've even said on this show that my uterus is closed for business. Do you know what I mean? Do you have children already? I have two boys. Yes. Oh, well, then you don't need Jenny to have children. Well, here's the thing. We, neither one of us has a girl. I'm just saying. But it's, <laughs> it's not intellectually we're sort of past kids. Yes. It's just primally, instinctively, sometimes <laughs> when we're doing the thing. Yes. It wants to happen. Yes. It wants to happen. Yes. It wants to happen. Yes. Wants to <laughs> I'm just saying. It's more of a primal thing right See, now. Yes, but yes. But we're, we're, we're reasoning our way out of it to this point. Uh-huh. But never now, say never. Now, Evan is how old now? He's 12. And how old are your kids? My sons are 13 and 21. Well, that 13-year-old plays with the 12-year-old, yes. and the 21-year-old watches both of them. There you go. Uh -huh. That's worked perfect. Out, it's worked out perfect. It really so, look, has. it was disgusting when we read about you being careless with your brand-new ring. Can, we have some ring cam, <laughs> and then can you explain what happened? Here's the ring cam. Yes. Okay. So, so here she is, right? And I say it's disgusting only because that's such a... Oh, God, I cried my lash. Was, is my lash coming off? Can I help you? No. I, I can help you. Okay, no, you didn't wash your hands. I don't want pink eye. No. Here, I can do it with this. No. I don't want a paper cut. Do this. No, stop trying to talk... Uh, uh, out talk this ring uh, now. Can I talk about... Can I tell you what happened with the ring? Yeah. All right. First it's of disgusting. all, it's a long story, but I'm going to clear the record up just for you. Okay. This is going to clear... The only the reason why you should misplace it. She has two... I got her two wedding rings. This one was the one she was supposed to get, but I surprised her with this one at the ceremony. The wedding band. The band. Which matches my ring. Yeah. Okay. So I surprised her with that. Now, she's right-handed. Okay. Sometimes when we do things, she needs her right hand. Oh. I'm just saying. Tell ya, see? And the, the ring gets a little scrapey. <laughs> now, when she was on this TV show, she was on some TV show, she, she had to take it off. She put it on the sheets. She thought she put it on the, the room service table, which was next to the bed. It had no relation to what was happening in the bed. It was just next <laughs> to the bed. Now, when she told the guy she lost her wedding ring, she meant the bonus wedding ring. She was standing there with all this hanging in okay, the guy's face. And the guy was like, oh, yeah, you lost your wedding ring. She's like this. I, yeah, this it's gone. The and there's sparkling yeah. everywhere. So it was she a band. And one. that still band. matters for sentimental value. Plus, Absolutely. it's diamonds. They're real. Absolutely. But I thought you were talking about that canary. Everybody no. thought, yeah, no. no. no, no, no. It was on her finger when she told the guy she lost it. And he's yeah. looking right at It's like me saying, you, you lost your watch? Yeah. What? <laughs> I mean, yeah. what kind of reporter wouldn't see the, the ring? But if you're going to lose it, that's a good reason. That's yeah. the only reason. Yes. You guys are disgusting. <laughs> and I mean that in a good you, way. You know me so long now, Wendy. Can you see how he's perfect for me? I can absolutely now see how they're perfect for each other. Did you meet on Watch What Happens or on, like, how did you meet? We met a hello during New Year's Eve when I hosted, uh, I've been hosting now for five years with uh, Ryan Seacrest. Uh -huh. yeah. And New Kids on the Block performed. And he said, hey, Jenny McCarthy. And I said, hey, Donnie Wahlberg. And that was it. And then cut to a year later, 
I was doing uh, Watch What Happens Live. A couple years later. A couple years later, yeah. Watch What Happens Live, and that's where I met him, and I thought he was married, so I gave him no heat. I shut that down. Yes. I don't flirt with married guys. Yeah. And uh, five months later, he came on my talk show, my VH1 talk show. Right. And I, did, in my research, I went, oh, he's single. <laughs> and then I opened up my eyes. Yeah. And I said, wow, he, he is just lighting my fire right now. <laughs> All right, so this is so good. All right, um... They're, they're giving us the, the rap sign, but what? before we rap, I just want to ask you, because him lighting your fire is what leads you into having Donnie Loves Jenny, mm -hmm. which is also going to be on A&E. Yeah, yes. right after Wahlberger. Right after Wahlberger. Back to back. And, uh, and so um, what made you decide to do reality TV? We, we wanted to do the show. We didn't need to do the show. We, I mean, we're doing tons of other things and having great success doing it. We love working together. We love being together. And if we weren't filling that extra time between our kids, ourselves, and our jobs with, with doing the show, we'd be doing another show. She might be off in L.A. doing a sitcom. I might be going on tour. So this allows us to work together. To work together and, and be a and, family. And make another happy piece of TV that we feel that, great there'd about. There'd be no wig pulling and no... Oh, my weed falls on sometimes, Wendy. Don't go too far. <laughs> but it's on my own. It was really nice to meet you, Donnie. You too. And Jenny, you, always Wendy. a pleasure. Thank Congratulations you. on all your happiness. Thank you so much. Donnie loves Jenny. It premieres tonight at 10.30 on A&E. Ask Wendy is next. Hot topic, and she's definitely a say it like you mean a girl. I was as shocked when I got fat as anybody else. The fabulous and fearless Kirstie Alley. Friday on an all new Wendy. It's time for Ask Wendy. How you doing? How you doing, Wendy? Good. I'm Alexandria. And I've been dating a man for a couple months now. And before we establish a monogamous relationship, I caught him with another woman. What was he doing? He was with another woman. Okay. <laughs> I came to his house and he had somebody in his bed. So I no, Well, knock first. I did. Okay. He let me in. So he got a little bit of credit for that. Oh, wow. So what's your question? I still want to make it work, but I can't get it out of my mind. Should I move on? Should I just try to make something happen? What should I do? How old are you? 27. See, I don't say move on, because it's not like he was cheating on you, you know? Until right. you establish a title, which is, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, or something like that, right. you shouldn't have felt any ways about it. And this is a conversation that you need to have with him, not me. Let him know your concerns, just so that he can explain to you and assure you. He was only with her because he wasn't 100% with you. Okay. Okay? Okay. Good luck. Wow, I love this. Thank you. I work just for you. Thank you. Who are you? <laughs> my name is Cynthia. How you doing? How you doing? Good. Um, one of my best friends are dating this guy, and she slowly found out that he not only lied about his children, but his career. They're now engaged, and she even asked me to be a part of the bridal party. How do I express my concern without jeopardizing my friendship with her? Okay, it's already je jeopardized. Okay. Because you're talking to me now on TV. Okay. <laughs> and we're in 53 countries. <laughs> and also your girlfriend's house. But what I will say is, what did he say? He had no kids? No. What did he say? Um, he just lied about the children's situation. Okay. His relationship with the kids he lied about. Well, I don't like any of this. I don't like lying about a career. I don't care what your career is. I don't care if you're a ditch digger. You be proud of who you are. And you know what I'm saying? Like, don't lie about your career and don't lie about kids. I wouldn't go to the wedding. Okay. And I would also consider this friendship over, because she's not going to understand this. Besides, when you get married, you choose your husband over your friends right, anyway. So right. keep the jumpsuit. Grab your purse and jump out the window. <laughs> okay. Um, what would you do if a woman who worked with your boyfriend was constantly flirting with him on the job? More Ask Wendy next. Do you want to be my next co-host? Okay, good. Go to wendyshow.com, request your free tickets, and be a part of my studio audience. Make sure you dress to impress. I can't wait to see you. Before the break, we were talking about... What were we saying about you? Oh, my name is Mariah. How you doing, Mariah? How you doing, Wendy? Uh-huh. OK, 
okay, so I have a situation. My boyfriend and I have been together for two years. He works in a gym. That's it. There is a young lady there who flirts with him quite a bit. She's always laughing. She's always touching him. She called him babe in front of me one time. Oh. Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of weird about it. I don't want to seem over jealous. Do you think I should approach her? What should I do? No, this is your boyfriend's job to handle it. And after two years, if he doesn't know how to... If he doesn't know the proper respect that another woman is supposed to show you, then maybe this is... How old are you? I am 23. Okay. He might not be the keeper. And I'm sorry. That's just how I feel. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Right. Because today you have somebody calling, babe, th th that's not appropriate. Yeah. I don't care if you were 83 and married for 50 years. <laughs> I agree. Don't call my man babe. Don't right. call him honey. And stop touching him. What's yeah. the matter with you? <laughs> Good luck. Thank well, you. But you have him deal with this. Okay. And if he doesn't shut it down, then you're done. Thank you, Wendy. You're welcome, Mariah. Oh, hi, Freckles. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. My boyfriend of four years likes to have locks on his phone and takes it everywhere around the house. However, he has everything. He knows all my passwords, and I leave my cell phone around everywhere so he can see it. Now, should I be concerned? He tells me I should trust him, but I honestly, I don't know. Kind of nervous about well, that. Well, the idea that he takes it all around the house is probably so he doesn't miss a call. I mean, mm. well, listen, in my younger years, I would say, mm-hmm, something's mm. up. You know, a lock on the phone and taking it all around the house. But now I'm an OG in this game, and I can tell you... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tell you right now, um, just because he has a lock on his phone and he takes it around the house does not mean that he's cheating on you. Okay. However, if you want to fight fire with fire... Put locks on your phone and stop making your stuff so available to I him. I do have a lock. Just do it. You mm -hmm. don't have to talk to him about it. And just understand he might not be cheating. That's locks he don't indicate. privacy. Yeah, how old are you? 26. See, you'll He's learn. 34. He's 34. Yeah. Well, he... Yeah. <laughs> well, look, just, just lock your stuff up. And a lock and taking it around the house does not mean that he's cheating. Okay. Okay? Thank All right. You. Good Thank luck. You. Up next, everybody. I challenge an audience member in a game of race the clock. So don't go far. is a doctoral student in Irvington, New Jersey. It's time to play Race the Clock, okay? Okay. I'm going to ask you a question, and you're going to give me the correct answers, um, and nobody help her. Ready? All right. Donnie Wahlberg rose to fame in the 80s band New Kids on a Block. Now, um, name four of the ten best... Oh, name four of the ten best... Selling. I'm so prepared. <laughs> name four of the ten best boy bands of all time. And go! Oh! Boys. Why are you screaming? That's one. In sync. Two. Beastie Boys. No. Black Street. Boys to Men. Yeah. Boys. Who plays on the block? Yeah, yeah you got it. <laughs> <laughs> she said the Beastie Boys. <laughs> Sade, we're going to give you, um, a, a, for you and a friend to go to Koi Restaurant. It's sushi here in Manhattan. We'll be right back. <laughs> what a mess. Tomorrow, Taraji P. Henson plus fitness, fitness expert Sean T. is going to be here. I love you for watching today, and I'll see you next time on Wendy. Bye. How you doing?